So today's video is on self-directed neuroplasticity and how you can use certain trainings to change your brain. Neuroplasticity is how the brain changes throughout your lifetime. So it was once thought that when you became an adult, what you had with the structure of the brain was fixed. But what we know is that the brain is always changing in regards to sensory input, habits, emotions, thoughts, and stress arousal. The adult brain grows new neurons, which are nerve cells, and it also can form new neural networks or connections between those neurons. And a recent study which showed some really interesting findings were where they looked at the brains of London taxi drivers. So they examined the hippocampus, which is an area to do with memory. And they found in the study with the London taxi driver participants that they were looking at, that the longer they were driving, the thicker the hippocampus became, which meant that they'd grown new neurons there and they'd made connections. Now the brain can also change without any influence from the outside world. So it can actually change in regards to thought patterns and stress arousal. So chronic worrying has been linked to an increase in size in the area called the amygdala. And this is a part in the survival brain which is detecting if we're safe or a situation is dangerous or life-threatening. And this is called neuroception and it happens below the level of conscious awareness. So from this process of neuroception, we move into different states of our nervous system and our physiology is affected. And a history of chronic or traumatic stress makes us more prone to have a sensitized amygdala and we're more likely to move into survival mode as we move outside of our comfort zone. The hippocampus is also profoundly affected by chronic stress and trauma. So with increased cortisol levels, that's the stress hormone, this can affect their dendrites, which are the branches that they have that help them to connect to other areas. So with cortisol, it can actually affect those branches so neural networks are limited. And this can take its toll on your ability to plan, to pay attention, to focus, and also affect your memory. And this is why chronic stress and trauma can really affect your ability to flourish and thrive and reach your potential because your brain is not functioning at its best. And this is why it can become really important to use self-directed neuroplasticity if you do have a history of chronic stress or trauma so that you can learn to integrate those areas better and to really shift the brain so that you can function at your potential. So just like you might use exercises at the gym as part of a rehabilitation program if you've had a physical injury, this can be thought of in the same way. By using techniques and practices, you can learn to make your nervous system more flexible, more adaptable, and really more resilient when you move outside of your comfort zone. From science, we know that it's not just the amygdala and the hippocampus that we can have a positive effect on through self-directed neuroplasticity. When we improve the activity in an area of the brain called the insula, we also increase our self-awareness and empathy. Likewise, by working with an area called the prefrontal cortex, it can actually increase happiness. So although your history has shaped your brain and your nervous system to be where it is today, hope lies in knowing that thanks to neuroplasticity, we can still create positive shifts in our brain that really help us to reach our potential and to flourish and thrive. And if this is something you'd like to learn more about, I'll be linking below my upcoming classes where you can get started with self-directed neuroplasticity. Thanks so much for watching.